Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember the time I lost my voice. And, you know, I would want to talk, but I could not talk. So if you did not lose your voice, if you have not lost it, and by God's grace, we will not lose it. Can we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The theme for today is the tricks of Satan. And God gave me three distinct messages for us today. So I will share the first, I will share the second, and then the third one will be on our theme. Now to the first one. The story was told of a church, a Baptist church abroad. And they needed a pastor. So they, beca they be began the search for a pastor. They got various pastors. They would come. They would preach. They would interview the pastor. And finally, this pastor came. And he preached very well. And the whole congregation said, wow, this must be our pastor. And so they brought on this pastor. And then he became their pastor. And on the very first Sunday, he walked to the pulpit, opened his Bible, and preached a great message. This sermon was biblically sound, it was theologically accurate, and it was very applicable to the congregation's everyday life. So everyone in the congregation said, you see, he made the right choice. This is the person we need. On the second Sunday, he walked to the pulpit, he opened his Bible, he preached again. But the same sermon, the sermon he preached the previous Sunday. There were some concerns like, okay, mm, the people were like, okay. At least some things that we did not learn well last week. We heard them better this week. And then the third Sunday came. And he walked to the pulpit again. And he preached the same message. People got concerned. And some people went to meet the elders and the deacons and said, See, if he has the audacity to preach the same message again another Sunday, you people better speak with him. And the fourth Sunday came. He opened his Bible. He preached again. And he preached the same sermon. The deacons went to meet him after service and said, excuse us, sir. We would like to meet with you. And then they went to his office. And then they said, we bless God for your life. But we know since you have been preaching the same sermon every Sunday, is, don't you have another sermon? Like, is there nothing else you would like to preach about? And the, glass, the preacher took off his glasses. He folded his hands. And he responded, I do have another sermon. But this church hasn't obeyed the first one yet. I do have another sermon, but this church hasn't obeyed the first one yet. And that is the very first message God will have me deliver to us this morning. God wants us to obey him. Hallelujah. James 1.22, he says, don't just be hearers. Be doers of the word. Matthew 7, 21, one of the scriptures that I read and I get scared. It says, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. In the past few days, I've been privileged to go through the messages from this church that we've listened to for a while. And sincerely, the messages are loaded. Nobody here can claim that ah, we just go to church to sleep. Not in this church. God has been sending us his word time and again, time and again. God is mindful of his investments in this church. And God is saying it is time to obey. It is time to do. God is not a waster. He knows his deposits. He's very intentional. He's very deliberate. God wants us to obey him. Like in the parable of the vineyard in Luke 13, 6 to 9, God will come to seek fruits in our lives. God will say, I have talked to her about obedience. How about send them a message on giving? God will come back and seek fruits in our lives based on what he has taught us. We live find fruit. In that Luke 13, 7, the owner came and began to look for fruit. And then the keeper said, please, give us another year. God is giving us another opportunity. He is mindful of what he's sending to us. He wants us to obey him. He wants us to pray. Lord, I receive grace to be obedient. I receive grace for diligent obedience to your word. I will not be a waster of your investments over my life. I receive grace for diligent obedience in the name of Jesus. Help me not to handle your word carelessly. Help me to be intentional about your word. 
Bible says all scripture is given for in, by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. All scripture is God breathed. It is useful for teaching. Have we been taught? It is useful for rebuking. Have we been rebuked? It is useful for correcting. Our lives corrected. It is useful for training. Are we trained in the things of righteousness? God sends the word to us every now and then to equip us. Are we equipped? I want us to pray for help. Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. God's word has a track record of producing results. So if it is not producing results, it is not the word, it is the soil. God, help my life. Imagine JB, help my life. Give me grace for obedience. I want to be a doer of the word. When you come looking for fruits, ah, my life will be full of fruits. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. The second word God sends me to tell us this morning is that we should take up our watch. Watch as in W-A-T-C-H. Take up your watch. Man your watch. Climb your watch tower. You know, in biblical days, you find watchmen, you find watch, watch towers. What's the work of a watchman? A watchman is like a spy, a lookout. He looks out, he looks about, he peers into the distance. He wants to make sure that the people, danger doesn't come upon them suddenly. The enemy don't come upon them suddenly. Our God is saying that we should take up our watch. Jeremiah 21, 8. A watchman was speaking there. He says, and the lookout, that's the lookout is another word for a watchman. Jeremiah 21, 8. He says, and look out called like a lion. Oh, Lord, I stand continually on the watchtower by day. I am stationed every night at my guard posts. God wants us to man our watchtowers. God wants us to man our watchtowers. Christians cannot be falling all around us and we are not concerned. Pastors' marriages are breaking like breakable plates. We cannot frame ignorance. You know, many of us were shocked with the revelations from the report of Ravi Zacharias. Pastors keep ending up in scandals. We cannot take another place and look away and say, oh, come me. We see people falling into sin. People who have preached Christ for years. The day I read about the man who wrote, my pledge allegiance to the Lamb, that he no longer believes in Jesus. Ah, I said, it's true. These things must move our hearts. We can't live alone as if I'm alone. We can't just claim, oh, it's the signs of the end times. Eh, in the end times, the love of many will wash food. Eh, but the Bible also says in Daniel 11, 32, it says, as many as do wickedly against the covenant, it will corrupt by flashes. But they that do know they are God, they will be strong. They will do exploits. So yes, end times. But these are the days for exploits. If we will man our watchtowers. God doesn't want us to be careless Christians. Jesus told Peter, the enemy has sought permission to sift you like wheat. For what? I prayed for you. God wants us to take up our prayer altars again and stand in intercession. Enough of Christians falling and rising. Enough of pastors being involved in scandals. Enough of we seeing people going directly to hell and then we are causing me Moses of Kogba. What have you done in your house? Jesus told Peter, I have prayed for you. What was his prayer? That your faith will not fail. And after you are revived, strengthen your brethren. We must arise and be faithful watchmen. Watchmen for our families. God is in search of people that will hold, up, hold on to his leg and say, Lord, not on my watch. This child, you are for Jesus. We must adopt nations. We must adopt pastors, adopt priests. You are praying for this priest daily. You are praying for this nation daily. Adopt a ministry, adopt a missionary. You know, there's this globe that contains the map of the world. It's an intercession too. We can keep turning and then praying for those countries. And then God will begin to reveal things. That is how to do exploits these days. Every move of the spirit, the foundation is always intercession. God is calling us back to faithful and diligent intercession. God says we should man our watchtowers. We are not too young to pray. You are not too old to pray. You are not too weak to pray. You are not too strong to pray. You are not too busy to pray. And you know, the, the thing is, Jesus says, I must do the work of him that sent me while he's day. Because night is coming when no man can walk. We will not always have this time. We will not always be here. So we must do the work while it is day. For night is coming when no man can walk. 
God says we should man our watchtowers. Ezekiel 22, 30. God is seeking those who will stay on their watch and ensure that no evil comes to the kingdom. That the kingdom does not suffer any loss because they are standing on their watchtower. May God find us faithful in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our theme for today says the tricks of Satan. One of our hymns says, Our loving far better than in days of youth. I'll serve him more truly than ever before. I'll do as he beats me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. I'll stand at my post. Our theme for today says the tricks of Satan. Can we echo it together? The tricks of Satan. Can we echo it together? The tricks of Satan. And we have three texts. I want all of us to please pay attention to reading. Paul told Timothy, give attendance to reading. The first one has been read for us, Luke 22, 1 to 23. The second one, which we will read now, please, if you are there, you read for us, James 1, 2 to 19. Please make sure you are reading from the scriptures, because as we read, the Holy Spirit ministers to us. Not everyone hears what I say. Everyone hears God in the person's own language. So I may be saying something, but God is speaking to you differently. Because God knows our needs. So please, let's make sure we are reading. James 1, 2 to 19. James 1, 2 to 19. Who is there? Please read for us. have a perfect work, that he may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. But let the, the rich in that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner re risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth. And the grace of the fashion of each perisheth, so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when the lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to rot. Thank you, Ma. Matthew 4, 1 to 11. That's the third one. Matthew chapter 4, 1 to 11. Please, if you are there, read for us. He had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, 
and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tend the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Verse 11. Then the devil liveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Thank you, sir. So we said our theme for today is the tricks of Satan. What is a trick? All of us know tricks. You know, it is something designed to fool or swindle or deceive someone. I remember our literature, you know, they would talk about, um, is it the kingdom of, I can't remember which kingdom, and then there was a big hole, and then they laid a mat on it, and then told someone to come and walk, and that it would be their king and all of that. Now, that is a trick. That is what Satan does. He knows how to put a big hole somewhere, and then lay something on it to make believers to fall inside. If we look at Matthew 4, 1 to 11, we see that temptation has always been a tool in the hand of, this, of the devil. It would always come with something. He tried it with the first Adam, and he tried it with the last Adam. Hallelujah. He always uses temptation to try to get us to go against God. Imagine Satan using scriptures to convince Jesus to sin. You are using the word to convince the word the living word to sin. It just shows us how desperate Satan is to get us to disobey God. I mean, Jesus is the living word. Satan had the audacity to come and use the word to cause the word to sin. And that is why we must take heed. Hallelujah. Satan works over time to get us to disobey God. If he tried it with Jesus, it will come for us too. Hallelujah. And we see from this Matthew 4, 1 to 11, that Satan usually comes to tempt us in our areas of need. He usually comes to tempt us when and where we are most vulnerable. Jesus has been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungry. Normal. And then Satan comes and says, oh yeah, turn stones to bread. Now, the problem was not bread or stone or anything. If Jesus had turned the stones to bread, who would he have pleased? At whose command? It is either we are running errands for Satan or we are running errands for Jesus. There is no middle ground. Any activity I do, anything I do, if I disobey God, if I choose to obey him, I'm either running errands for Satan or I'm running errands for our Lord Jesus. You know, it is not you need money than an opportunity to make money in an illegitimate way will come. It is when one has a sick parent that there's an opportunity for bribe. You know, there was, I can't remember the details of the story, but there was, I think, a director in Abuja. You know, a politician wanted him to do something. And then the politician got someone to bring 350 million cash to his house at night. And someone was saying that that's what they often do. They don't write checks, no. They bring it cash so that the money will talk to you. You know, it is when one sees cash, 350 million, you know that money has voice. And you know, it was at that time that the director needed school fees. Dollar had just gone up, and his children were abroad. They needed their school fees. And he said overnight, the money began to talk to him. You see, you need me. <clears throat> you will just take me, nobody will know about it. The politician will not tell anybody. You know, and when they brought the money, he told the person that brought it, take it back, I don't want it. But the person said, no, I don't take orders from you. We obey the last order. So if you don't want it, you call the man and they find a way to return it. So it was with the money overnight. And the money began to talk to him. And then he began to rationalize, saying, you know, 
You know, that's when Satan will be saying this is God's provision. But his wife stood her ground and said, we are returning it. As in, Allah affair, we are returning it and they were able to return it. So we must be careful. When we don't feel like praying, is when we should pray more. When we don't feel like coming to church, is when we should run and come. Because the enemy is always looking for a loophole where he can get us. That's one of his tricks. Where we are most vulnerable, that's where he comes in. That Jesus was hungry was normal. Our needs are often legitimate, but the enemy wants us to meet them in illegitimate ways. He doesn't want us to wait for God's timing to meet those needs. You could have turned the stone to bread. In fact, many people around would have said, ah, what a great miracle. And that we are getting results does not mean that God is there. If you turned the stones to bread, they would have been bread. No, it's all. <laughs> but it would have displeased God. So we must be careful. We must take heed. We must take heed to please God. And you know, Satan has been around for a long time. Okay? And that is why, you know, Satan uses familiar spirits. So if anybody sees me walking on the road and then he begins to say some things and they are true, it does not mean the person is from God. It may just be a familiar spirit. Oh, your grandma did this. Your grandpa did uh -huh, And so what? Hallelujah. Because when Paul was moving around in the heart of the apostles, there was a girl that was possessed. And she was saying, I listen to them. Oh, these are people from God. She was saying the truth, but through, through a demon. And that's why we must not run after prophecies these last days. Because one mark will go. You know, there will be prophecies. There will, those, there will be those who will say, oh, this happened to your mom. You say, yes, it's true. Oh, this happened to your dad. You say, yes, it's true. So this person is from God. No. So that we get results does not mean it is of God. We must take it to do things according to God's way. Hallelujah. So we won't dwell too much on the methods, the tricks of Satan. We will dwell on the provision that God has given to us to overcome them. What must we do? You must give your life to Jesus. It is dangerous to live without Jesus. You can't be in the enemy's camp and want to triumph over him. How come now? From where? Praise God. So the first way to overcoming the tricks of the enemy is to give our hearts to Jesus. And when we say Jesus is our Lord and is our Savior, it's not just our Savior, it's our Lord. If we say Jesus is our Lord, that means we are ready to obey him. Hallelujah. So the first means to overcoming Satan's tricks and temptations is to give our lives to Jesus. James 1, 14 to 15. You can't overcome Satan when we are staying in his camp. Matthew 1, 21. Let's read that Matthew 1, 21. You know, it talks about Jesus. It says, and his name shall be called Jesus. Why? If we save the people from what? From what? He will come and give us cars, not necessarily. So the mark of a Christian is that sin no longer has dominion over us. So we can't be Christians and be dragging around and say, you see, I've sinned now, I was helpless. So you were not. Hallelujah. Because the very primary mission of Jesus is to save us from our sins. Is to deliver us from this body of sin. You know, people often quote um, Romans 7. You know, the down part where Paul says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of sin? And they say, You see, even Paul was helpless. No, sir. You know, it is um, Bible commentators and people that packed it together that divided it into chapters. If you go further down, let's see it. Romans 8. We'll start from the ending of Romans 7. Romans 7, 24. It says, Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of death? That's where some people stop. So they go ahead and sin and say, you see, even Paul. No. 25 says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with my mind, I serve the law of God, but with my flesh, the law of sin. And my boy, eight more now says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them. Who which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. When freedom is freedom. He says he has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. 
So the very first one is to give our hearts to Jesus. To make sure that we are not just playing church. To make sure we are not just quoting scriptures for quoting's sake. To indeed be saved. You know when the role is called up yonder? Our call, I'm a list here. God will not give my husband the list and say, you are called the people who are to come into the kingdom. The book of life will not be in the hands of my husband. If not, he will call all of us in, whether we are righteous or not. It is the judge who is just that we hold it. So please, if you are still here to give your heart to Jesus, please do. Today. Hallelujah. The second way to overcoming the tricks of Satan is to give no room to the devil. Give no room to the devil. Ephesians 4.27 Ephesians 4.27 The NIV says, Do not give the devil a foothold. Another version says, Do not give the devil a chance. Another version says, Do not give the devil an opportunity. KJV says, Neither give place to the devil. Because if you give the devil an inch, he will take more than a mile. Hallelujah. If one says, let me quickly disobey God, I will quickly repent. Ha. The devil will make sure that that little disobedience becomes much. Hallelujah. All he needs is just one mistake. He had a conversation with Satan. And to today, we are still seeing the, con the consequences of that conversation. She just said, eh, okay, Satan came. Did the Lord say? And she began to converse with, the, with Satan. You know, when thoughts begin to come to my heart, maybe my husband says something. And then I'm like, no, you can't talk to me like that. What, what is this? I say, I'll pay me sure I. My jacket should lose. In fact, my lawyer should. Because that jelly should go to that jelly. You know, we must not hold conversations with Satan. When he begins to bring thoughts into our head, we quickly rebook it. You know, by the time we begin to entertain the thoughts, James told us that, you know, it's now the lust will now clothe itself, now becomes sin. So immediately we see that our thoughts are going the way against Christ. We rebuke it, we stop it. Hallelujah. We don't even entertain that conversation with Satan. And you know, it comes in our thoughts. If Satan comes as one bearing horns, all of us will know now that this is Satan. But it comes softly. Now says, no, say no. Say that you, you cannot collect it. You are this, you are that. <laughs> I say, okay, you know, I refuse to hold conversations with Satan. We tell Satan to shut up and we do what God wants us to do. And you know, especially in marriage and especially between husbands and wives. Hallelujah. I'm learning that a man's number one love language is respect. Number one, yeah, there are the others. But a man wants to be respected. And you know, there is a positive ego God has put upon a man so that he can be the head indeed. So every man longs to be respected. Someone was preaching last week and then the person referred us to the story of Abigail and David. Have we read that story before? We remember Abigail, the wife of Nabal the fool. Now, in one conversation, 1 Samuel 25, Abigail called David Lord 14 times. We can count it. You know, in just one conversation, you know, they were just talking. So, the enemies of my Lord, of my Lord, Lord, ah, ah. immediately neighbor dad, ah, he went and got her. David sent and then, Eba me muwa, let her be my wife. Because the one he had at home, Micah, was very rude. You know, she would come back and say, see how, the, 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 see, see how you paraded yourself before the mates. You know, she was a, a king's daughter, so she was rude. But there was one who called him Lord 14 times in one conversation. Ah, so this is a wife indeed. And that is what men want, respect. And that's why God says we should submit to our husbands. Okay, that's an aside. But we must obey God. Every conversation must bring glory to him. Hallelujah. So when the enemy brings suggestions to us, we tell him to shut up. Get thee behind me, Satan. And like we said, one mistake is enough. Just one. One very small, innocent mistake. It was the season when kings go to war. David decided to stay in his house. Bible says it was the season. 2 Samuel 11, 1 and 2. It was, those time, it was that time of the year when kings will usually go to war. But David said, mm, I will stay back. Joab, take the people to war. 
And so from one mistake to another, to another, until Nathan told him the sword will not depart from your house. Until today, Israel is still paying for that. Jesus was dead. He was already dead on the cross. One soldier still went to do over Sabi and still pierced him with a spear. Bible says they broke the legs of the other ones. But for this one, he pierced him because the sword remained along the lineage. So we should be careful. Our actions have consequences beyond us. When um, Rahab saved those people, her parents, her family did not know about it. But because she did the right thing, they got saved too. Hallelujah. When Noah was conversing with God and he looked stupid for, bring, for building an ark when there was no rain, his family was saved. Families have been destroyed because members of those families yielded to, this, to Satan. One mistake is always not for the enemy. Judas, you know, we read about him in our Bible reading for today. Satan was just cruising with his life. Huh? How will you be a disciple of Jesus? You heard the, the message directly from Jesus. And your Bible says Satan entered him. Matthew 10, 4 to 5. You know, because we may, we may not be sure, but Jesus chose Judas too. Let's see Matthew 10, 4 to 5. Was he chosen by God? Like, ah, maybe it was a mistake. But you're a one, maybe that was how he misbehaved. Was he one of the disciples? Matthew 10, 4. 5 says, this 12, Jesus, okay. 4 says, Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. So he was chosen by Jesus. 5 says, this 12, Jesus sent forth. Judas and Bell. This 12, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. So it was among those that Jesus sent out to preach. And you know when they came back, they said, we saw Satan, like lightning, falling. Judas! So how did he fall from our people that are casting out devils to now be someone that devil entered? Yoruba will say, Obetene Obaro, Omajono. Did I get it right? And that's how Christianity is. That I, I stayed with God last year will not help me. Ah, no, I read my Bible two years ago. In fact, four years ago, I used to finish the Bible. I finished the Bible 50 times in a year. Mm -hmm. It is give us this day our daily bread. Hallelujah. We must keep walking with the Lord. We must keep walking with the Lord. We must keep walking with the Lord. The third one, Ephesians 5, 11, it says, And I have no fellowship. How do we overcome? I have no fellowship. Did the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Have no, no means no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No does not mean we are considering it. Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. We must say no to ungodly relationships. We must say no to ungodly friendships. Psalm 1, he said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standed in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You know, if you take a piece of charcoal, we know coal, and put it around white clothes, will the white clothes get dirty? Now, if I get bigger white clothes, and I wrap it around the charcoal, will the charcoal be whitened? Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. If we look at your circle of friends and they are not those that love God, soon, soon, it is different if you went to do missions and evangelism. But the Koriko soon are people that talk carelessly, are people that don't value God. Soon. Because that charcoal, no matter the white clothes, keep wrapping it and say, ah, this charcoal, you must be whitened today. It's just keep rubbing itself. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. So we must say no to ungodly relationships. We must say no to ungodly friendships. The fourth one, Galatians 5.16. It says, this I say then. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We must walk in the spirit 24-7. Hallelujah. 
there is no room for slacking. There is no room for, I don't feel like doing God's will today. Apostle Paul says, I put my body under. So that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified. 1 Corinthians 9.27 We must be in the spirit always. We must walk in the spirit always. We must be led by the Holy Ghost always. 1 Peter 5.8 We must be vigilant. It says be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking what? He's looking for our money. No. He's seeking who he may devour. There is no time for slacking, people of God. We must not live as if the battle is over yet. The enemy is still watching out for our souls. One of our hymns says, Christians, seek not yet repose. Yeah, that was the hymn we took, yes. Thy guide and angel say, thou art in the midst of foes. Watch and pray. Another more. Do the moon. Amy Ferre de Beni Jesui Rondam Pada Soru Pea Wayo Dimu. We must walk in the spirit always. There is no alternative. The fifth one, second to the last one. We must stay close to the word. That Matthew 4 that we read, Jesus was able to triumph through the word. We must stay close to the word. If Jesus won the victory through the word, that is how we too will win the victory over the tricks of Satan. Psalm 119 verse 9, part of where we read in the psalm, he said, where is that shall a man cleanse his way? By taking heed unto thy word, according to thy word. If Jesus won through the word, we will win through the word of God. Hallelujah. And the last one, we must remain conscious of our victory in Christ. Ah, we are not going to battle. The victory has been won. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans says, sin shall no longer have dominion over us. So it's not just that, uh, let me now come and fight. No, the, the victory has been won. We are effecting and executing that victory. So we must stay conscious of our victory in Christ Jesus. I'm no longer... A slave to sin. I am a child of God. Jesus brought us victory over sin. He brought us victory over Satan. He brought us victory over demons. So we are no longer under their authority. And the payment for this price was not cheap. You know, if my husband bought me, what do I want? Yeah, I want to say Jeep 20, 2019. Okay, so let's imagine that he bought me a good car. And then he brings it to me and I'm like, so how much did you pay for it? Ah, what dash mini? Oh. But if he comes back and says, see, all my salary for, for 2021, I used to buy this. I would say, ah, so you love me this much. So God wants us, hallelujah. The victory has been won for us. And the price that Jesus paid to make sure that we don't fall to these tricks of Satan was his blood. He paid the highest price that there was to be paid. So anytime we fall into sin, it's not you. You are trampling on the price that Christ paid. Every time we go against God's command, you know, it is different if you mistakenly fell into sin. You quickly run back to God. But you know that this is wrong, and you went ahead and did it. Haba. The greatest price has been paid. He paid with his blood so that we would live for him. Please let's rise. Oh, the fault for I am coming. Jesus whisper still. Raise the answer back to heaven. By thy grace we will I want us to talk to God. Lord, by your grace, we will hold on until you see you face to face. By your grace, we will stand in victory over sin. We will stand in victory over Satan until we see you face to face. Hebrews 12 said you have not fought against sin with your own blood. You have not fought on to that point. Lord, by your grace, I don't trust in myself. I entrust myself to your grace. By your grace, we will... 
By your grace, we will stand in victory. By your grace, we will stand victorious. I will no longer double into sin. I will no longer be held down by fear. I will no longer fall for the tricks of the enemy. If Jesus was able to stand, I am able to stand. For we have a high priest who cannot but sympathize with us. Because he was tempted in every way, yet without sin. And so he's available to help us. Lord, I lay hold on help today. I lay hold on grace today. In the name of Jesus, I am helped by God. Thank you, Father. We depend on you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I want to pray from two scriptures. Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 7.25. And this is the truth of God's word. Hebrews 7.25. It says, wherefore, he is able also to save them. To the uttermost, it will not save us that way. This is our confidence. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jude 1 24. Jude 1 24. It says, Now unto him, now unto who? Not unto me, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with a sitting joy. I want us to commune with God. Lord, I commend myself to you. You are able to say to the uttermost, when you saved me, the plan was that you would save me to the end. When you saved my soul, it was so that I would behold you in glory. So no matter the tricks that the enemy lays on my way, I am victorious by your help. In the name of Jesus, I commend myself afresh to you. I commend members of ACM afresh to you. Unto you is able, you are well able, you are well able to keep us faultless. Oh, we submit ourselves afresh. We commend ourselves afresh. We will no longer double into tricks. We will no longer fall and rise. We stand in victory over sin. We stand in victory over Satan. All to you is able to keep us from falling. We commend ourselves, oh God. Keep us by your grace. Keep us by your mercy. In the name of Jesus. Oh, now all to him who is able to keep us from falling. Keep us, keep us, keep us. Oh, help us, Jesus. Keep us. Help us, Lord Jesus. Keep us by your power, by your mercy. Keep us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. That James that we read talks about a crown. Ah, may God make us fit for that crown. The crown is not for starters. You know, Matthew 7 said, they will come and say, in your name we did this. In your name we did this. If he still says to them, depart from me. I do not know you, workers of iniquity. I want us to pray that the Lord will make us fit for this crown. By all means, at whatever cost, Lord, make us fit to wear this crown. Hey, make us fit to wear, by all means, muwadele. The battle is against our soul. The devil is not after our money. The hell is for Satan and his agents, not for us. He's trying to lure so that at the end we will dwell with him. But no, we want to reign with our God. Lord, make us fit for this crown. By all means, whatever it will take you, oh God, move Adele. By whatever means, anything it will take you, oh God, get us safely home. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Bodok, we shall not be a fee. We must not be lost on the path. Lord, by all means, get us safely home. By all means, no matter what tomorrow holds, get us safely home. We want to reign with you eternally. We don't want to miss heaven for anything. Lord, keep us by your power. Oh, we make a fresh commitment to you. We pledge allegiance to the Lamb. To walk with you, to do your will, to obey you. Lord, help us. We put our hands in your hands today. Lord, help us. By all means, get us home. 
by all means, make us reign with you. No matter what happens, Lord, help us to reign with you. This is the goal. Make us fit for this crown, oh God. In the name of Jesus, no matter what the enemy puts on our path. God, by all means, at whatever cost, we want to see you face to face. In the name of Jesus. Ah, in the final scheme of things, this is what matters. They won't count how many cars we had on earth. They won't count how many houses. In the final scheme of things that we reign with him, this is our desire, Lord. By all means, this is what matters. In the final scheme of things, how many people we led? Oh, it was on Forbes. No, that won't matter. What we matter is that we reign with you. So by all means, oh God, get us safely home. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. This is a prayer we pray in our house every day. By all means, Lord. Many will die by the roadside. But me, still are many. You know, many would almost make it. They will fall. No. This must be our desire. This must be our earnest plea. If we ever pray, this must be our prayer for ourselves, of those around us that we may see him face to face that he may make us fit to wear this crown for the crown is given to overcome us those who overcome, those who finish the race I pray God's grace will be sufficient for us in Jesus name Amen.